Just what I'm gonna do. Yeah. All right, item 10, wants and warrants. Short and sweet, so listen up. Be on the lookout for one Roland J. Thompson, also known as Hardball, Cue Ball, or Dr. T. He's a male black, 5'7", 145 pounds, distinguishing characteristic being a totally bald pate. Last spotted driving a 76 Grey Cutlass, license plate 053 Apple David Baker. Also be on the alert this AM for a Herbert D. Ponzitino, a male Caucasian, brown hair, brown eyes, 5'10", heavy set, prime suspect in the Avenue B housing project rapes. Let's put a little extra into that one, people, as Mr. Ponzitino's aberrant appetites appear to be on the rise. <laughs> Item 11. Detective Belker will be staking out the uh, shop and save 24-hour market and hurdle this a.m. Pursuant to a 34% increase in uh, purse snatching and rob assaults on the patrons of said establishment. Motor patrols, be alert to that situation. Item last, the senior criminology class of the St. Mary's Girls High School will be guests on the premises for the next three days under my direct supervision. <laughs> Needless to say, these young ladies are to be shown the utmost courtesy, courtesy. by the officers of this precinct. Yeah. Yeah. And be reminded as well that I expect a code of conduct that is exemplary, language-wise, behavior-wise, and every which way otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. Let's roll. And hey, hey, hey! Let's be careful out there. Five or six hours. Hey, sir, you sure you don't need any help uh, on that supervision? Yeah, what about that? My God, Neil, have you ever seen some of these teenage chicks' firm young bosoms bursting to be free, short, fleeted, Skirts caressing golden down across an expanse of firm white thigh. You're a sick man, baby. I know, I know, I just can't help it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take this new departmental manual to my pit stop this morning so yeah. I can, in case they run out of sanitary wipes. Ma, there's nothing to be concerned about. Yes, they called me, so I know they put him in the hospital ward, but the doctor said it's only a cold. It's a simple precautionary, Ma. The doctor said, at that age, if you don't watch it... It's not pneumonia, Ma. Don't be silly. They're only concerned that it shouldn't get into the lung, that's all. They're giving, um... Petrocycling. Don't worry about the money, would you please? I already authorized the addition. Don't keep saying that. According to the doctor, it's a simple prophylactic measure. Ma. Ma. Ma! It doesn't mean what you think it means. It has nothing to do with sex.
sure a week before the prelim will be fine, yeah? Uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, thanks, Don. Yo, Frank. I got a driver waiting for me outside, and I've been cooling my heels here 12 minutes already. I got a 9 o'clock cross-town brunch with my broker. So what's up? This is what's up. You want to fill me in? Looks like a standard financial disclosure for the Union Securities Exchange. Uh-huh. Well, your signature at the bottom and my name in it is your prime credit reference. No. I would have put down Pepe Hernandez, but he got turned down for parole. What the hell's time. going on here, Jesus? According to this, you've invested nearly $50,000 in some kind of commodity futures deal. Beans. My broker tells me if it rings in Georgia next month, I can turn this paper over for a cool 1.5 million. Unless you uh, rather I go off book and deal Peruvian yap serum like most of the dudes in my social economic type. Come on, Frankie. Let me get my nose on a white man's trophy. In case you've forgotten, Jesus, the grant proposal you submitted was for a local youth recreation program. What's 50 lousy G's worth of basketball and high tops? Besides, preliminary account to the feds is not due for five weeks. By then, I'll have enough money to buy my whole damn country club. Just get my name off your credit reference. You want to spend the next five years upstate, do it without my help, okay? Okay, Frankie. Mark my words. What you see standing here before you today is the next Robert Vesco. Robert Vesco has won it in over 14 countries on about five dozen counts of international securities fraud. Whatever. I'm not even going to ask what that was about. Believe me, you're better off. a few hours early? I've got an assault case left over from last night. Regular one-man wrecking crew, according to his arrest sheet. We'll, uh, station in uniform in there with you. That's okay. I've got a good ten rounds left in my mace canister. Frank, do you mind if I take a rain check on lunch today? Clark Galloway's flying out from Washington on the morning shuttle. I take it you got the job. I suppose I'll find that out at lunch. Really, Frank, I have no idea. Excuse me, Miss Davenport, your suspect is interrogation one. Thank you, Sergeant. I'll let you know after lunch. Senior officer that the police the rank of the shall be determined by the specialized rank. Then by pay grade Normally, assignment with the rank. Normally, be considered rank. Then by seniority with the pay grade assignment with the rank. When an incident has reached when an incident has reached the point where the remaining functions are investigative and the senior concerned what investigative detective should be in command, assuming such command by identifying himself and informing the officer then in command. Besides which, you never really identify yourself. What do you want, a neon ray? For God's sake, here you go. Detective Lieutenant, Lieutenant Detective. You mind telling me what's going on? I was merely instructing the junior lieutenant in the fine points of rank determination. Our right. house junkie got sick on some lawyer's car in the lot, Frank. It was a bailiff car, and I got there first. Oh, just trying to break up a fight, for God's sake. I had the situation under General. control, thank you. Yeah, my man. I think it's time we all three had a talk, don't you? Since I suddenly find myself available for lunch, suppose we meet in a few hours and get to the bottom of this. I phone the galley for a table. That's over 20 blocks from here. I'll call Luis's. 
Luis I'll get yes, the restaurant, yes. okay, gentlemen? Agreed. State Health found a dog collar behind Luis's last month. I don't know what they're talking about. I was sipping a beer, minding my own business, when this big weightlifter type comes over and he starts Five to... Five foot six inches, 145 pounds. It's been the lighting. Anyway, he follows me into the john. He starts physically attacking me. It was terrible. I've got statements here on the crime report from three witnesses that you followed him into the washroom. No, you're kidding. Mr. Crockett, it's not exactly classified information that you've been working as a collection enforcer for a loan shark by the name of Tobias Wolf for the past several years. It's also a matter of record that the victim of this assault was in arrears to Mr. Wolf for the amount of $8,000. You got a great bod, Mama. What are you doing for breakfast tomorrow? Quit wasting my time, Crockett. In case you slept through the introductions, I'm your lawyer. I'm representing you. So unless you want to walk into that courtroom with just your questionable wit and a three-page rap sheet, I suggest you cut the crap and tell me what really happened or I'm out of here. Keep a secret. All lawyer-client correspondence is regarded by law as privileged communication. Well, in that case... Totally unprovoked assault. I used the creep's face like a volleyball against the John door for at least five minutes. It was a real ugly scene. I'm just glad there wasn't anybody in there to see it. That little shrimp won't sign a complaint against me for a million bucks, counselor. If he does, he's fish food in the river by the end of the week. No complaint, no charges. I'm out of this stink hole by four at the latest. I imagine you will be, Mr. Crockett. Get him! 
I don't care if you ran a purple line. I'm about to bust a major organ here. I gave you 15 minutes for a sit-down. Is it my fault that Jekyllac was hogging that stall as per usual? Just make it fast. Well, oh, and I'm dying here, Bobby, so just do the standard routine, okay? License, registration, scribble a few notes, and adios, Mario. You got that? License and registration, please. Don't tell me. That's the socks, right? Blue socks, brown shoes. I've offended you. <laughs> no, wait, it's that uh, family of 12 that I rescued from a burning bus last week, and you want to give me a medal. Oh, please. <laughs> Look, you ran a red light back there, sir. Would you just give us your license and registration, please? Oh, you mean the license? Yeah. Triple A card do? How about a double A card? Instead of a tow truck, they send you a fifth of scotch. Good <laughs> morning, this turned out to be, huh? Guy comes up to me, he says, you know where Delaware Park is? I say, no. He says, okay, I'm lucky here. <laughs> Ask you for your license and registration here, Slick. Hey, relax, pal. It's uh, <clears throat> probably in the uh, glove compartment. You've got several hundred dollars worth of parking tickets in there. Well, I'll be darned. You can have the entire lot for $29.95. <laughs> could, could we just please, would, uh... Would you mind stepping out the car? Well, what are you gonna do? Shoot me? Beat me to death with those rubber hoses? Mm -hmm. It'll look too good, pal. <laughs> look, we're gonna take you down to the station. Just step out the car. Out the okay, car. okay, you know, lock me up, persecute me, you can put the nails right through the hands and feed me to small animals. But remember this, I'm a personal friend of Joey Bishop. <laughs> Wait right here. Falker. Move. More left. I'm deathly the same. Deathly the same. Oh, boy, that was you stuff on that old jar of wine. Sit up. You had no stuff like you did without running that bad boy. Well, if you had no waste of time rousing that pot rose. I wouldn't have had to stop for the white boy. Well, who's it been telling me he'd rather go out in a blaze of gunfire than eat another plate of beans? Well, you shut up. Name, you first. Pretty Loud Jones. I ain't never been outside of the law in my life. Except for the time I borrowed some weekend money from the liquor store. That was 38 long years ago. I've been having myself a clean slate ever since. That's a large truth, son. Only dress. We got us a room down on Decker. There ain't no address on account of they tore it down when they condemned the building. Ain't that right, game here? I'm moving out on you, Freddy. This is the last time I let you get me in any trouble. Well, don't let the screen door hit you on your way out. Hey, guys. I don't think you understand. You pulled an armed robbery. Even though the gun wasn't loaded, you're probably going to jail. See what you done done. Oh, you're going to jail. The jails have bathrooms with hot running water nowadays. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we better off than we've been. Do they have food in jail? Yeah. Cause Barney here, he don't eat on Saturday. And I don't eat on Sunday. And that gets us through the week. They have doctors in jail. Cause Freddy here, He's got diabetes and phlebitis, and he can't go back to the hospital anymore because he done used up all of his benefits. And Barney here, he's got a bad heart. Yeah, they say I have to have a triple overpass, and I'm on the list for one of those operations. What he needs is one of those mechanical hearts. 
There's a whole lot of white men have to get one before he get one. Pretty, I left my pills. I thought we'd be home free by now. <laughs> Because you could have got hurt. So what? What happened to your face? I'm going to get hurt. That's my job. Well, you're too little for a psycho like that. I can look you in the eye, hot shot. You're right. I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. You embarrass me, Mick. Don't ever do it again. You better put some peroxide on that. Those things... Bonjour. Hi. Can I uh, help? Yeah. Could you tell us where Sergeant Esper House is, please? Oh, uh, he's that tall, elderly gentleman over there. But uh, looks like he might be a little busy, so. Oh, the bells of St. Mary. Sergeant Esper House? That's correct. And who might you be? I'm Kristen. And your last name? Murphy. And you? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Cold showers, babe. Push-ups. <laughs> it's criminal, Neil. Esther House monopolizing all that young flesh. Officers <laughs> 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 huh? Hey, I'm a dangerous man. Tear tags off a mattress. <laughs> all right, stand here, face this man. Keep your mouth shut. Oh, do you know what I did? I yelled fire at a urologist convention once. That's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> you ever try a little humor in your work? You ever try paying your parking tickets? Once. It cost me money. <laughs> <laughs> all right, check is all yours, Boy Scout. I got a date with some porcelain. Angry wife goes to visit her husband in the joint. I'm fed up, she says. Look at your life. Attempted robbery, attempted burglary, attempted murder. Can't you finish anything? <laughs> <laughs> this is my uncle. Incredible man, a psychic. Did the exact day he was going to die. The warden told him. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. Hey, you're a pretty funny guy. A little old lady walks up to a cop and says, I was attacked, I was attacked. He says, when? She says, 20 years ago. He says, well, what are you telling me now for? She says, because I just like to talk about it every once in a while. <laughs> Scream. You know, you ought to be doing this for a living. <laughs> Thanks, Einstein. I mean, what do you think? I'm a member of the Joint Chiefs of Staff or something? <laughs> they do do this for a living. <laughs> yeah? No kidding, huh? Professional comic. Hey, hey, you working at a club around time? Maybe I can catch your act. Well, I'm, uh, you know, kind of in between gigs right now. You know, it takes a little time to get established, and since I... Just hit town six months ago from Miami. You've been out of a gig for six months? A guy with your talent? I hate it. It's a damn despotism in this business, right? So you know. <laughs> and am I right or am I right not to mention ages? I mean, you sign with the wrong one. Next stop, toilet town. <laughs> <laughs> My old lady, I took her to a wife swapping party last week. I had to throw in some cash. <laughs> Danger? <laughs> Vic, public relations. I mean, I don't want to make excuses or nothing, but I mean, how in the hell am I supposed to, you know, land a gig wearing this clown suit? Uh, sorry, I need your full name. It's Vic, sweetheart. Vic. Yeah, I, I got that. Shiny pants. I haven't had a decent razor cutter manicure in two years. Should have caught my act in Reno, 72. Man, did I look sharp. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, I need your last name. Oh, it's Hitler. And then there's my car. I mean, that's a joke in itself right oh, there. Yeah. Hitler? Yeah, Vic Hitler. Read my lips. Vic Hitler. I mean, you don't think the 
you know, guys that park the car don't tell the club owners that I drive a 15-year-old Dodge. <laughs> money chases money, Hitler. right? Hitler. That's my life story. <laughs> it's in a nutshell. Hey, hey. Uh, now, you, you ever thought of changing your name? Why? <laughs> Hey, Tatum, you seen yet? You tell me how sane I'm supposed to be. After you guys beat me every way but Sunday. Hey, pal, what do you call this? A rose? Put these on. You don't put yourself a lawsuit, Jack. I got rights. You know where I come from? We don't take that kind of stuff off of him. Another county heard from. And where I come from, we'd have your turkey face for breakfast. All right, your ass is come on. Hey, Harley, turn it off. Yeah? Or what? You gonna sit on me, right, huh? You gonna get on my case? I mean, ain't got no rights no more. Why don't you give it a rest, both of you? If now is not the most opportune time, amigo, this old ex-checker can wait a while. Thank you very much for the time, but I think I ought to pay you while I still have it. <laughs> I understand. How is the old-timer doing, Mick? My father? Mm. Most of the time, he ain't so good. Doctor says he's got Alzheimer's disease. Mm. A friend of the family? Both. This is Zymer individual? No. Probably some guy they just named diseases after. It's a sure thing, Neil. All the guy needs is some front money. Something for a suit. A little something for some promotion. Maybe we take out one or two ads in one of them Hollywood papers. He's gone. Vegas, Atlantic City, Johnny Carson. Man, you saw him. He's got it all. Delivery, timing, instinct. Yeah, parking tickets. What's that got to do with anything? All artists got quirks. Well, do they have the name Hitler? Man, you can't see a stroke of genius when it slaps you in the face. In the business, it's what's known as a hook. Who ever heard of a comic with the name Hitler? I think there's a reason for that, babe. Yeah, I gotta admit, I, I've been toying with a minor name change. Vic. Hitler Jr. I'm telling you, Neil, Hitler is the best thing that ever happened to us. J.D., you might as well turn off the faucet, babe, because you ain't getting dollar one out of this cop. Uh-uh-uh. Don't even bother missing the mouth. Two hundred. Two hundred inflation-ridden dollars to help launch a career that'll land the both of us in Money City for life. You gonna pass up a chance like that? Mm-hmm. Every time. Talk with departmental maintenance this morning. We should get another furnace in a couple of months. Great. Just in time for summer. How's your beef? Rosa makes it better. How's your fish? Fine. A little too much butter. Feels good. I almost got the veal. This is crazy. 
We've been here for half an hour. We've covered every subject from furnaces to veal, except what we came here to talk about. Henry should go first. After all, it's his situation that has changed, not mine. I'm stuck in the same hole. Great, Ray. Bleed all over the table. We're here because of you. What's the problem, Ray? It's just that, damn it, Frank, I don't get any respect from anyone. How can I spend the whole day saying, phone call, Frank, your car is ready. I feel useless. I feel like everyone is moving up except me. I feel like I'm being left behind by you, Frank. It stinks. Okay. <clears throat> now we're getting somewhere. <clears throat> uh, would you mind putting out that cigar, sir? Now, this is the smoking section. Doesn't give you the right to ruin my meal. So call a cop. I am a cop. So big deal, you're a cop. What are you gonna do, send me up the river? I paid a buck for this cigar. I want to enjoy it. Here. Hey, that's gonna cost you more than a buck. This is a designated smoking area, sir. I'd hate to have to ask you to leave. You don't have to. Displacing anxiety. No psychoanalysis, Henry, okay? Right. You're right. Besides, we have other things to talk about. Provided we don't die of old age getting to the point. I'm jealous. I'm jealous. I am ambitious. And I'm afraid. Welcome to the human race, Ray. I'm afraid you don't think I'm good enough to be a captain. Have I given you any indication of that? Frank, my scores are high. I'm a hard worker. The department is ready to promote Hispanics. I'm out of answers. So I have to ask myself if it's you. I've recommended you for every vacancy. How strongly. Frank, be honest with me. Do you believe I have leadership ability? I think there's no better man in the department, no more decent human being. I think you're a gifted organizer and administrator. But? Do I see clear capacity for leadership? Sometimes. Sometimes not. I see. You feel... 80% of the precinct's business. You have a better flow chart in your head than any duty officer's blackboard. I'm 48 years old. I have goals that I want to accomplish. Ambitions that I set out with when I was 20 years old. When I came here. And I appreciate that, Ray, but you also have to keep in mind that even if you don't reach all those goals, it doesn't make you less a person. So says the captain. You're right. It's easy for me to say. Thank you for your honesty, Frank. You've given me a lot to think about. Well, I hope you heard everything I said. The good as well. I heard everything. Thank <laughs> you. 
Ladies, here in the vending area, the officer takes sustenance. When he isn't time for the full dress meal, you might like to enjoy. Disgusting. How could I think that? Get out of here, man. Did I die? I think I died and went right to heaven. <laughs> Hey, I finally made it, American Bandstand. Hey, spotlight on Rico. Oh, ladies, shall we leave the area, please? Please. Okay. Frank, how are you? Uh, I'm pregnant, Frank. You sure? Paul Grogan. Who else? What are you going to do? I don't know. You know how I feel about abortion, and, uh... I'm going to be 39 years old, Frank. I'm pregnant by a man who won't even take the responsibility for returning my phone calls, let alone supporting a child. You're always so logical, Frank. Please be logical for me now. I can't tell you what to do, Faye. If you ask my opinion, I can't really see an upside to this. I mean, your moral convictions about abortion notwithstanding, you're already raising an eight-year-old who's quite a handful. I know. You know my financial situation. Your rent and Frank Jr.'s expenses. I guess you'd have to ask the father for support, and that might mean court appearances, testimony. I know. And there are possible health considerations. I know, Frank. It's just that there's, uh, this life in me. And I'm so moved. It, it's, it's as if Paul has nothing to do with it. I know you think I'm a flake, Frank. Stop it. But I raised your son. Yes? I mean, is there anything about him you'd have different? Nope. It's just that... I mean, I know everything you say is true, but... I have life in me. Ask me what I think. Now, no matter how it is between us, we're still a family, you know. So no matter what you choose, I'll still be there. I'll do whatever I can. I love you, Frank. I always have, and I always will.
gun level holding facility, a recently added transitional accommodation for our precincts alleged perpetrators. Here on the left, presently in the arms of Morpheus, is a gentleman arrested in an acute delusional state directly resulting from his ingestion of dangerous drugs. Do you see anything glamorous in that, ladies? Hmm? Anything that looks like fun? Mr. Tatum! young man you know your holding cells are getting like the firing range captain People had the Dom Levy homicide a while back. The last thing I need right now is some smart ass from IAD taking cheap shots at this precinct. Sorry. Save your sorries and do your job. Is this area generally left uh, unsupervised? Read your manual. A khaki officer is down here to check this facility every half hour. Well, according to my information, the last person down here was Officer Coffee, who was not a khaki officer. I told you, I was bringing the guy some clothes. Captain, I think you're going to have to put Officer Coffee on a desk pending disposition. I mean, my accounts have him choking the man out at the bust and uh, making a trip to see him in his cell. Is Captain! That it? For now, until we get forensics. I swear, Captain, I never touched the guy. I got a witness right in that cell. He was right in that He'll cell. No question. Don't worry about it. Yeah. It's procedure, Joe. It's just going to be a couple days. I don't believe this. All right, Frank. I'm dead. This guy's going to convict me of the Korean War. Wally? I understand one of your boys choked a guy. That's speculative at best. Now listen, Frank, I owe you one. You just tell me how you want it. I want it by the numbers, Coroner Nydorf. Oh, sure. I just, um, of course, let's see what we got. Either one of the brawls could have killed them, Tatum Frank, but I don't buy it. The time frame's all wrong. Some kind of physiological reaction to the PCP could have done it. But again, there's a time factor. Tatum was coming down. The drug was dissipated. No, whatever killed Lynn Tatum occurred while he was inside the cell, Frank. I'm convinced of it. Now, I got a theory, one that's not contradicted by circumstances. Get in the cell, Frank. Just get in the cell. Now, come on over here by the bars over here. Right over here. That's right. Now, turn around. Like that. That's good. Now, you see? With my left arm like this, Frank, you'd never show bar burns to the back of Tatum's head. Okay? Now I let you go, and you fall. Uh, no, tell me what you think happened, Wally. Will you just fall, Frank? You see? 
You see where your honker's headed, Frank? Right splat in the cement. You fall like that to the dead faint, you buy yourself a trauma right up here in the bridge of the nose. Datum had a collection of blood up here, Frank. It had pooled, and there were bruised marks on the frontal planes of the face. He must have been hit 30 times in the course of two major struggles with officers, and surely he had to be hit in the nose. It's the time frame, Frank, the time. The way the blood clotted says that he was lying motionless within minutes of the injury. So, he falls here, and then probably a few minutes later, in a half-conscious state, consistent with the tracheal damage observed, he stumbles over to his cot, where he fails to regain consciousness. suffocates by reason of a fractured larynx. He, he was subdued by a chokehold during the initial arrest. Couldn't the injury have occurred then? <laughs> From what I hear, he was yelling his lungs out for nearly an hour after they dragged him in here, Frank. With a fracture like that, the vocal cords are shot in 15 to 20 minutes. Find any blood on the floor? Patience, Frank. We'll be down here with our tongues on the cement. Couldn't coffee? Yes, coffee could have killed him. But it could have been the guy in the next cell, Frank. Now, I took the liberty of asking a couple of questions. And from what I hear, Lynn Tatum's native wasn't exactly an advocate of better relations among the races. The two guys had some words. So to my mind, given what you said about coffee, I'd at least pick this guy up we'll and ask him a few questions. We're looking for him right now. Thanks, Wally. Uh, Thank you. Uh, hey, Frank. So what do you think? Young Sherlock Holmes or what? <laughs> Your Honor, my clients inform me they might be willing to do a certain amount of local time in this matter, say, till mid-May, if they could be assured of being cellmates. Well, that's very generous of them to set so few conditions, Mr. Mancuso. Uh, counsel, please approach. Detective, you as well. Your Honor, the people are not unaware of the age of the defendants, but this was an armed robbery with a gun. Unloaded gun. Detective, what's your impression of these two old coats? Well, they seem to be nice enough guys to me, Your Honor. They're a little short of dough, like a lot of people these days. And, uh, it's none of my business. But they're both sick. One of them has diabetes. Well, I'm aware of it, Detective. It's on my papers here. Mr. Alvarez, I'm not about to hand these men life sentences. We're talking about 18 months max. With these guys, that is a life sentence. Your Honor, if you're intending to dismiss, the people will have to strenuously object. Well, be my guess, Mr. Alvarez, because that's exactly what I'm going to do. Step back. Gentlemen. You come back before me again on a crime as heinous as this. I'll see that you get 12 years apiece in separate cells, in different prisons. You'll die 500 miles apart. Cases adjourned. Contemplation of dismissal. Step out. Well, 
here with the uh, stuff, man. Property clerk, second floor. Docket number is N637452-4. Four five eight, Vic. Vic Hitler. How you doing? Occupations comedian, Mr. Hitler. That's your mid and last, huh? Your Honor, uh, Your Honor, Detective John LaRue, Hill Street Station. I, uh, I just want to be a character witness for Mr. Hitler. Hey, Sonny. You know they wouldn't give us our gun back. Your gun? Yeah. What are you talking about, you hairball? You have any idea the kind of breaks you guys got today? You got a revolving door judge, you got a good word from me, and you got real, real lucky when the guy in the supermarket didn't have a shotgun under the counter. You got to keep your noses clean, do you hear me? Pull a stunt like this again, and like the judge said, you're going to jail. And if you go to jail, you ain't going to see each other anymore. Yeah, we know that. Think we don't know that? Well, then, you can't make us beg, that's all. Won't do no more begging, neither one of us. Won't eat no more dog food, neither. Too old to eat dog food. Come on, Freddy. Mr. Hitler, are you uh, capable at this time of paying all or part of the money you owe this state? Dream on, Your Honor. I'm so tapped that my banker came to my apartment and demanded his calendar back. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Set a hearing date for the purpose of constructing a schedule by which Mr. Hitler will be able to meet his obligations. It isn't the intent of this court to prevent parking violators from practicing their trade, regardless of their surnames. Your Honor, thank you sincerely and deeply. You're a beautiful person. Like. Detective LaRue here. I don't know if you like jokes, Your Honor, but... Yeah, uh, uh, Vic, huh? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Come on, let's see. This, this guy is the type of man I who should have. No, that's too, Vic. You're a beautiful Come person. Come on. Thanks. You are. Push it. Uh, yeah. well, make her you know what I'm going to do? I have an uncle in the gravel business. I'm going to call him tomorrow. Hey, look, we're going to get the lawyer. Everything's going to be fine. You know, whatever happened down there in the cellar, I mean, you can tell me if you want. Hey, I don't have a word to add. Not one word. Those two old guys were just... They weren't your father, Mick. I mean, your father's got you, your father's got your mom and your sister. Doesn't matter. You get old people push you off, they put you in a home. Come on. Hey, you know something? Let's go see your old man. When, right now? Yeah, sure, why not? I was just there this afternoon. Yeah, but we could go together. I'd like to meet your father. You would, really? Really. I really would. I'm not kidding. What about this morning? I forget about it. It's history. We're in this thing together, Mick. Let's 
Our table will be ready in a few minutes. Where's Clark? You go back. He's staying at the Marquis tonight. He's got some business in town tomorrow. Uh, he offered me the job. Could I have some uh, water with uh, lemon in it? Can we sit over there? Take it? I haven't decided yet. Thank you. Well, don't look at me like that. Like I'm some kind of criminal. It's not that easy, Frank. You'll be leaving my life. You keep saying that, but listen to me. Even if I take it, I'd... I'd see you every weekend. Plus, twice a month, I'd be here on business. Then maybe after 12, 18 months, I'd reassess. With the Justice Department antitrust background, there'd be law firms in this town offering me 70000 to start. That would offer us a, a whole different kind of security. Maybe. Somehow... When I put all those jokes together, they, it all comes out differently. You were down in Washington, you worked for Clark. Suddenly you realize what's really on his mind. He's in love with you. He's rich and unencumbered. And, well, we don't just have to talk about Clark. Washington is filled with exciting men, exciting jobs. Come home a couple of weekends, and here's... Good old Frank Ferrillo in a slightly shiny suit. You don't wear shiny suits, Frank. Did you tell him you have a boyfriend? Yes. Did you say he's a cop or he works in law enforcement? Frank, you're being very mean right now. No, I'm not. I'm just...